Welcome everyone, welcome. Welcome to another episode of Son of Elijah. My name is Mac the Lion and I'm your host for this program. We're still on our series on witchcraft and the artistry, the complementary artistry that has become an instrument that Satan uses in order to deal with families, limit entities, cause clans to be addicted to problems and ultimately at the end of the day bring nations to a place where there is a certain level of thinking that allows and sustains the weaknesses and the devices and the grip of wickedness to continue to thrive in the midst of a people of a specific lingua and tongue. You must understand that Satan depends so much on this grassroots movement of wickedness. And that's why there's a constancy of snakes that are being minted out on a daily basis by head snakes who are inhabiting bodies of women who are much older and more advanced and who have been around long enough having those snakes curl up their spine and then linked to their womb and from there project and then a certain timeline comes wherein the birth new snakes and unleash them to connect with newer members and they recruit them because Satan needs this army of foot soldiers to continue to manipulate, to continue to deceive, to continue to configure the lives of many in order to suit his own outcome. So at the end of the day, these witches become powerful and they love that power. They enjoy it so much. But God wants us to fight back. God wants us to push back at the lowest level. Before you can get to a place where you can take down principalities or rulers of darkness or institutional forms of wickedness in your community, you need to first deal with the witches and the witchcraft that is prevalent within your immediacy of your household. I will give you a practical example of this. There was a young man I met in a certain home. The boy is 19, but he was still in high school. And if you know anything about the age you know, timeline, you know that by 19, you should already be in your second or third year in university. And now this boy was 19, but he was still in high school. So I wanted to know what was wrong. And then he explained to me that he was having challenges in the classroom and he had had to repeat and fail a couple of times. So we had a bit of that conversation. I left it. And then one of my prayer sessions, God opened to me and I saw everything that happened to him. So later that evening, we did have a Bible study and he was there. And I looked at him after the Bible study and I said, there is a woman who looks like an albino. She's extremely light-skinned. She's an old woman, but she has not only spots. Her own spots are distinctive because they are of this size. They are very big. And there is one very large one on her neck here. Who immediately said, that's my great aunt. I said, she's the one that took your destiny. That's why you are mounting to nothing fast. Your destiny has been long gone for many years. She took it. And not only you, she controls the destiny of every child that was raised in that community. She has literally neutralized every single person. Because God took me to your village. And when I got to your town and your village, it looked like a barren wasteland. And then it looks like as if they were humans, but all these humans were like trees. Everyone was fixed in one spot. They had no leaves and they were just stuck in the ground halfway. So from their shoulder down, they were in the earth. And then from the way out, they all stood like this. They were all frozen. And I noticed that they were mostly young people, the youth, the kids, the young people, they were all there. And I saw them in their thousands, but the whole land was a barren wasteland. And I said, I saw that the big witch, the senior witch, who was controlling the whole thing, was this very light-skinned woman who looked like an albino. And she had a big black patch on her neck and then she had smaller spots all over her face and the guy said that's my great aunt that is the junior sister of my direct grandmother to my father that is her because that description is perfectly her because she has that she looks like an albino she is actually an albino that's her that's who she is and then she has those patches i said that woman is a very powerful witch extremely i said she took your destiny and then he started telling me his life story you know just quickly and he said you know my father came from that town i never knew my father 
I was born by my mother and they, they were not together and later he died and then I never met him. He said, so one day I was told in the house that I couldn't just keep on staying here. I need to go and find my roots and go and locate my, my mother's and my father's village. So I went one weekend after, he said I was 10 at the time and I was on holiday. So they put me in a bus and I traveled to a very far place and I found the place and they had already called someone there ahead, so they were expecting me. And when I got there, they took me to my father's house. They said, these are your cousins, these are whatever. And then they kept me in a room. He said, all I know was that between that night and morning, someone came in and molested me sexually. He said, even though I was 10 and I wasn't even ready for that, and I don't know what was going on, but I just knew that at some point my body started vibrating and some things came out of me, say, and that was it. And then after that, I didn't make too much of it. And I told him right there and there, I said, the lady who did it is your cousin. And that lady, she's a junior witch. And that big witch was the one who instructed her from the coven and sent her to go and get his destiny. Because for them to be able to take it, because you are fresh meat, <laughs> you are fresh blood. It was a very big mistake. They should not have sent you on that trip because that was your undoing and he said the very minute he got up something started moving in his body he wasn't sure what it was and then after that he came back you know after the, the visit he was there for about two weeks or so then he came back and when he returned and came back to his home he said everything that he had known before he was no more remembering things and then he got back to school he said before i was a top student in my class every single person learned from me i was the teacher of all my colleagues i was number one in the classroom he said i came back and i became the dumbest i was so bad that i was literally the first from the last i didn't understand anything again you could teach me for hours but i'll just be staring he said, that's what happened to me. I said, yes. Because what happened was this. When you showed up in that town, you were fresh meat. And then the, the coven celebrated your arrival. And then they sent someone to go and get your destiny. And in order for them to log in and take your destiny, they needed to molest you sexually. And so that was why your cousin came in and did exactly that. And then, because she was both a physical and a, and a spiritual entity. So she came in physically and spiritually she took your seed. And then she copped it using her womb. And then she took it away and delivered it to the coven. And then they used it and sent it and you know trafficked in it because that's what they do let me explain to you how the dynamics is you see you remember where the bible says it talks about mystery babylon and it calls her the mother of harlots the reason why she's the mother of harlots is because that harlotry is not referring to individuals who stand on the street and market themselves sexually no that's not the harlotry that has been inferred here the harlotry here is talking about witches because witches are spiritual harlots so what they are able to do is with the power of their womb they can go into anybody's bed and take their seed literally it could just be a hug it could be anything the person would do with them and then before you know it the person has found out the male has found out that he has released upon himself he has ejaculated on himself so that process is how they cup the seed once they take it then they, they use their womb because the snake is there so the snake actually swallows it then they take that seed because remember the life of the blood is in the seed so that is a, a handshake so what they've done is that they, with that they are able to take the person's star so you ask the question how did they take the stars oh it's very simple you see everyone has been given a star remember when they saw jesus the magi who came looking for jesus said that they saw his star in the east because a mighty star came out and these guys were very metaphysical they they had some type of you know inclination to wizard because they, they knew they were able to read the face of the sky even if they were not diabolical but one thing was sure they had knowledge of the stars and so when they looked up they were able to understand and read that this star is the star of a king someone is born today someone has manifested today Day, who literally will bring uh, salvation and a turn around to the destinies of many and is a mighty king and what did they do they they actually got up and started looking for him that tells you clearly that they were so good with understanding the face of the sky that they were convinced that a hundred percent sure a king has been born so immediately they, they took presents because you can't go before a king empty so they took presents and took myrrh and frankincense and gold and then they set out on their journey and then they started heading down to find him and then they came to the place where the star was and stood over and that's how they knew the child was there remember when they arrived they went to herod herod said are you sure they said yes herod said okay if you find him tell me so i can come and make obedience to him but actually what herod wanted to do was actually to kill the child because now herod was a king and now he didn't want another king to be born in his territory and he took it very serious because he knew that those guys had the artistry of eastern religious practices and they understood the face of the sky and the real king was born so every time someone is born they, they, they have a star that are pairs actually in the heavenlies now that is where satan goes to read the data of everyone and know what people are called to so what happens is that mystery babylon has access to that ability remember that these are the same people that read the face of the sky and we call them the mediums that read 
carrots and red card palm readers stargazers as they call them so they are able to look into the spiritual realm into the ethereal realm and see destinies that are great so they were able to look into that specifically and then they see what people are carrying and that's why they know who to go against the reason is because they need that star that star is power because that is the instrument and the gift and the talent and the backings that god has given you in the heavenlies naturally that is meant to back you up and help you to be able to be meaningful in life that's how it is meant to be so they know that so they look for it so when they capture it or they get it they need to get it but they, they don't have access to it because they don't have the power to take it so for in order for them to take it they need to exchange something for it so if you are male the, what they do is this that they come in and they then they defile your bed so by defiling your bed what they do is this they give you pleasure because your pleasure is your is the instrument of exchange so once you succumb to that pressure in the realm of the spirit and then find yourself having some type of sexual intercourse or getting involved with anything that is sex of a sexual nature and once you indulge in that immediately that door opens because what you've just done is that you have now taken their asset and once you take the asset they need to take their own so there's an exchange and the exchange of what they need is your star now it's not a fair exchange but that is not it the main thing is that they need your seed which is the blood from which they are able to make a legal exchange and take your star so when they take that person's star and then they now use it they take it into the depth of the waters and then they now start manipulating with it so what now happens is this when people go to dark art when people go to the wizards or people go to sangomas and all these people and they say they need a star they need an opening now they don't say they need a star when they go to the sangomas they say they need luck they need help they need to be able to make it in life their business is not working they are not making money so those sangomas will say okay you know what give me a few days let me consult when they go to the deep then the devil will bring out because the instrument of his capture is already on ground so the devil will bring out all the stars that he has stolen from people and then say okay i have this star i have this star this person is a his star has money this one his star has breakthrough this one his star has leadership this one will be a president this one his star has opened us in this area this one is an inventor so they have all these stars and all these are spiritual backings that god has made available for individuals to flourish and prosper within their lifetimes and with that they are able to utilize it and use it to be able to gain advancement in life so when satan takes it he steals it he now uses that star and then now gives give it to these individuals and then those other ones will now go in and sign covenants on behalf of the people who have sought powers in the deep for help in order for them to prosper in life and then the individual comes back and then the younger or the sangoma or the witch doctor or the wizard presents it that means he's a trafficker so he has negotiated a deal then he brings it to the person and say okay this is this this is this this is this in order for you have done everything all you just need to do is ratify it so the guy ratifies it and because it's the ratification is usually what they tell you to bring whatever they tell you to bring Bring in order for you to receive that which they have already prepared for you is exactly what is required in order for them to give you that which they want to give you now once you now give them that is ratified the covenant is agreed then they deliver that thing to you now this person is still on the earth the person who originally owns that star is still on the earth and is troubled and is struggling and struggling with every effort he makes to make it in life he will be getting poorer and poorer while the person they've trafficked that destiny to will be getting richer and richer that's why there's a lot of people on the earth that are getting richer each of the stars of other people literally and this is how they do it that's the dynamics of it because i've seen this whole thing happen spiritually i know the whole story i know the whole shebang this is what they do they steal the stars of people and others are laboring so i told someone the other day i say you came very late to your own party you don't know you've been sponsoring parties you don't know people have been eating off your destiny you don't know people have been driving cars buying latest things off you and that's why you are stuck in a room or stuck in a place struggling have nothing and life is you can't even boast of any resource why people are eating your destiny for free and how they got it was that you may have had sexually intercourse physically with someone that has the power of that witch to be able to harvest your seed or if they didn't do it physically they will go spiritually remember that scripture that says this is 17 is in 18 is in 19 of the book of revelation go and read it he said the kings of the earth have gone into her the who are the kings of the earth the kings of the earth are individuals who have been called to achieve great things with their lives the word kings means a ruler someone who is meant to dominate life someone who is meant to have results someone who is meant to have breakthrough all around somebody who's meant to have multiple impact on multiple layers in their lifetime and as a result of that god has placed them on the earth to take absolute dominion because they are meant to lead they are meant to challenge the earth they are meant to be great they are meant to be accomplished they are meant to be at the top of the world they are meant to be listed as in the forbes of our world 
They are meant to achieve so much greatness with their lives. But as a result of the fact that they played the game and played it foolishly by exposing themselves sexually or by also indulging some type of spiritual sexual activity, remember the Bible calls witches the daughters of Babylon. Babylon is the mother of harlots. Harlots are spiritual entities that have the capacity to cup the seed of men, take it, traffic it, manipulate it, and then utilize it to sell our stars to other people who consult mediums, consult devils, consult wizards, consult witches who are able to negotiate, go to the deep, receive those stars on their behalf, give to them, and then Satan has been able to create that exchange. So transferring the back end. You see, you can't be rich physically except you are rich spiritually. You can't break through physically except you break through spiritually. You cannot, your talent can't shine. You could be the most gifted person in the bunch, but your star may never shine because your star has been stolen and it has been given to somebody else. And this is the reality of what is happening. And even when you are a Christian, it doesn't mean all your stars are returned automatically. It just means now you have the opportunity to retrieve it. It's almost like it, as if you are given the army and the resources in order for you to actually wage war and go and extrapolate and return and take back what is rightfully yours. That's what it means to be a Christian. But just because you're a Christian doesn't mean automatically all your resources are returned. I remember I was having a debate with a young man in the 90s and he was saying, no, no, no. Once you are born again, once you are a Christian, automatically everything is restored. Old things are passed away. New things are come. I said, that sounds very sweet, but that's not the reality of my experience and the experience I see with people because I'm seeing people who are Christians, but they are still struggling. They are still bound. They are still addicted to the bottle. They are still addicted to sex. There are all kinds of problems they are having, but yeah, they're giving their life to Christ. So that means that revelation you are teaching is not properly applied. I'm not saying that all things are not passed away. What I'm saying is that life that you are talking about needs to be enforced. There is a process that will guarantee the victory at the end. You will always have overcome at the end, not at the beginning. It never said when you give your life to Christ, everything will be fixed. It just says that when you give your life to Christ, the process of that restoration starts. The Bible says salvation, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That means there's a work, there's a process, there's a development, there's a timeline that is involved for you to get involved and do what is necessary in order for you to transform your life by using the word of God practically until you are able to reclaim the designation and the destiny that God has scheduled for you. But it's not going to happen automatically. It's not going to happen because you just want it. It's not going to happen because you are just a Christian. No, you have to learn the dynamics of it. There are so many Christians that are living in emptiness and in, in nothingness. They are being robbed on a daily basis. They are Christians, but their lives are mounting to nothing. One of the primary reasons why God placed me on the earth is to equip the Christians and the sons and the daughters of God to go forth and reclaim what is rightfully theirs and repossess their destinies and take the enemy by force and restore the destination that God has really scheduled for them. So you can't give excuses. You see, when the devil steals these things, he, he uses it to negotiate away. And that's why when people consult the youngers and the Sangomas and all these powers, many a times they tell them, come back in three days. Why do you think they tell them to go and return? The reason is because they need to take that person's request and go to the abyss and go and negotiate a package for them. The negotiation is this person wants to be rich, this person wants this, this person says business is not working, or this person has an enemy who wants to attack. And based on that, they need help. They need stars. They need all this. I remember a young man I prayed for some years ago. They've prayed and prayed and prayed for him. Nothing worked. His pastor said, you have to find someone. Please, I can't help you because his pastor tried everything. And his pastor really loved the guy, but apparently he was not just able to win. So when he met me, I said, oh, it's sorted. I said, sorted. Can you fast at all? If you fast on the third day, we'll, we'll deal with it. And we did deal with it. When eventually the anointing came upon him, and I don't want to go into the story because that's another story, and I don't want to put too many stories in one episode. In that particular encounter, two mighty pythons jumped out of his body and they were white pythons. And I told him, I said, you know why they are two? Because they are literally reproducing right in your body, in your spirit. And so that means they are multiplying their oppression on the fly, literally. They don't even need to go anywhere to replenish destruction. They just need to live and remain in your body and constantly. And I said, and I told him, I said it was a relative that projected it. There's a woman I saw that projected it because those snakes cannot come to you except someone who has access to you. And I want to use this opportunity and explain also the blood conundrum. You see, the reason why witches are very powerful in their enclave is because everyone who they are linked to by blood, by DNA, when they project and shoot an arrow, that person is vulnerable because that person has the same blood that they have. You see the power of it? Let me give you the opposite of it. Jesus speaks to us all the time and the Bible commands us to pray for our people, pray for our loved ones, pray for those around us, pray for our community, pray for uh, those who are close to us, our, our friends and everyone. But one of the main emphasis is to pray for
for your family. Why? Because family are the group of individuals that have the same blood with you. So when you pray, the vibrations of your prayer, be it understanding or tongues, it doesn't matter. Whatever prayers emitting from your mouth and you are calling someone who you share the same bloodline with, that person's vibration will be in tune because their blood is the same with yours. So the impact and the influence of your passion of your prayer will be very you know powerful when it affects them and you see when you pray for someone it doesn't get them saved but the prayer in itself gives them more time the prayer in itself influences them the prayer in itself arranges their steps to come in line or more opportunities for people who can reach them or speak to them or, or talk to them or try and convert them to be occurring because they are impacted simply by the blood connection that's why everyone that god has raised right now who can pray you must pray for your family it is your responsibility to make sure you stand in the gap so that they don't die suddenly and so that every single one of them may come to the saving knowledge of Jesus in your lifetime. God only needs to raise one person because once there is no intercessor, there is a disaster. God said it in the Old Testament. Is there, is there no man? Is there no intercessor? Is there no one standing in the gap? So God is the one who raises people to stand in the gap. But you being in the same family makes it easy because your blood connection is extremely good. Now, but at the same time, if that person is a wizard, that's also how another person who is connected to them by blood is vulnerable. I remember a young man who came to me some years ago and told me that someone is attacking him and I looked into the spiritual realm and I I told him clearly i know the person that is attacking him and then he said yes he's my aunt i said it's not your aunt he said no i said that woman you're talking about how she related to you he said by marriage she's the wife of my uncle i said that what makes her not qualified because she does not have your blood so whatever she does she may be a diabolical woman but she's limited because she doesn't have access to you i said there's somebody else who has access to you that's the person that is really responsible so i told him who the person is and i told him i said that person has a python in them and that person swallows up your eggs and your eggs are your future because every animal that is egg reproductive animal uses their eggs to what to reproduce the next generation so what that means is i told him i say swallowing your eggs that means those eggs are your dreams and visions of what you have been incubating in your spirit hoping to hatch and produce at the particular time but this particular person comes in and then swallows your eggs and take them away and that's why after a while you see nothing is happening after a while nothing manifests because you've been robbed this is the realities of the powers of of darkness you in the artistry of witchcraft so when the enemy negotiates away destinies he does that using the access point of those who are meant to be kings and rulers on this earth who have exposed themselves so someone may also say okay but that is for males because males are the ones who go into sexual kind of behavior that grants the access for babylon to take their seed for which he now uses to steal their stars how about the females in the mix yes the devil also has his own for the females because he knows exactly what he's doing he creates an opportunity for them to come into any any type of sin because Satan is sin to get in he needs sin to get in and once there is a sinful behavior that he begins to present with pressure that immediately gives him the legal access he requires in order to get access to that female you see everybody sexually releases blood whether it's through the seed of a male or the female who cycles out now that cyclical order also gives opportunity for the enemy to use that to be able to access the females and by so doing these ones are not witches, but now they are victims. And then the devil creates a sin. It could be fornication, it could be anything. And then he uses it. And then he uses it to take that which they are carrying. Now, when it comes to do with invention, creativity, breakthrough, you know, men are the ones who are in the leadership position. And that's why she prefers to go after men's destinies. Because those ones are a bigger cash cow. And then for the females, he prefers to use destructive emotional intelligence and get them wrapped into the artistry of manipulation and then deceive them to make decisions and line and then they start representing him in that area and before you know it a snake is minted to them and then they start practicing witchcraft without knowing and many of them don't even know their witches i've counseled a lot of people who don't know their witches they just know they have these strange dreams and they're exposed to different things but they don't know that they have been hired already because satan has not given them a slip so say you are now my staff so they don't know and those entities are those snakes are already living there and now they are doing things and they wonder why at times they push for some things and they get what they want and they think it's because they are very smart or they are they really can finesse or manipulate men or manipulate people what they don't know is that they're actually using the power of witchcraft that's why they say at times a woman's fury hell does not have anything on it simply because there are some women if they are angry and a man has mistakenly crossed into their path or has slept with them or have any type of dalliances with them they literally have the power to recreate that man's destiny or destroy him and it happened times without number 
And by the time they begin to declare or say things that must happen to the man, it happens. And if the women are very powerful and very diabolical, it even becomes worse. Because some people have slept with witches without knowing. And then their whole destiny just descended into the abyss. And now they are struggling. There are some that are doing okay, but what they don't know is that that okay they are doing is just a smidgen of what their real and great destiny really carries. Because they are carried away with the crumbs they are eating off, not knowing that their main motherload has been stolen by Babylon, by witches, by Jezebels, by the daughters of Mystery Babylon, and by the instruments of witchcraft. I will leave you there. My name is Mark the Lion. I hope you enjoyed that which you heard today. I will see you in the next episode. Please like, share, subscribe, and let everyone enjoy that which you are also enjoying here. And please also, you can use the link down there to give locally or globally, whichever works for you. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next episode of Son of Elijah. Bye.